Hi, we're uh, TNP Consulting and we're here now to present the new case. Uh, this time we're going to talk about forecasting and, um, and we're just going to go ahead and uh, present some of the, of the topics that we're going to talk about. And uh, to, start, to start our presentation, uh, we're first going to look at uh, some of the, of the benefits from forecasting. Uh, then we're going to talk about the best approaches to forecasting the tie bat, and then we're going to talk about the uh, spot versus the forward, um, and what's the best sort of forecasting approach. Uh, and we we'll also look into arbitrage opportunities versus market equilibrium, and uh, we're just going to jump right in. Um, first of all, uh, we're going to talk about the benefits of forecasting, uh, and 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 one of the one of the Especially for for Blades PLC, um, it's relevant to have currency uh, forecasting because uh, due to their international nature, uh, they will be exposed to to currency risk. And uh, as such, um, we're going to look at some of the of the overall benefits of of forecasting. And uh, and the central and the and the core uh, benefit from this it, it's going to be reflected on the the value of the firm. And so we can look at this in two different aspects. The first of all is in the cash flows. Um, we can we can certainly benefit uh, from hedging currency, uh, and this in turn uh, has to do with sort of the the cash that's going to be available. Um, we, we need to look at sort of the cash structure of the company and sort of the timing of of, of the of the of how how the the, the cash flows are going to be needed. So depending on this, um, we're going to have to analyze sort of the exposure of, of the company to the volatility of, of the Thai bat. And in that, um, of course, we're going we're gonna to have to sort of come up with a, a good strategy of for, or forecasting this, and, and, and we're going to explain this later. But um, it basically we, we can basically look at different types of, of forecasting that we're going to they're going to be sort of focused um, Depending on the needs of the company, and sort of the second aspect of the of the um, um, forecasting and and the way it impacts the, the value of the firm is the cost of capital, and so w we're basically looking at, at the potential uh, a potential foreign financing, which means that um, uh, depending on sort of how the rates are moving or sort of like the different um, sort of currency risks that exist in the market. Um, are presented um, in, a, in a given scenario, we might have the possibility of finding a, a, a cheaper cost of capital abroad. So, hence, the it's important to sort of keep this in mind, as obviously the value of the firm will ultimately um, will benefit from this. So, we can move on and look at the different the approaches of, of forecasting, and we're going to talk about the. Um, three main uh, different uh, forecasting methodologies. Um, the first one's called fundamental and uh, this model sort of reflects the, the, the macroeconomic um, sort of impact of, of or sort of events, how, how these events sort of reflect upon uh, the, the behavior of the currency. Um, and so of course um, one of the toughest parts of this methodology is being able to come up with a model that controls for unobserved variables that are um, sort of outside of the scope of, of, of our of our um, analysis, and, and 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 one of the benefits is that we can sort of adjust it and, and weight those variables uh, depending on sort of the importance or the relevance or sort of um, the the focus of concern that we have on certain macroeconomic variables in the behavior of the of the currency, and a different. Um, Forecasting methodology is a market-based, which is obviously sensitive to market changes, and sort of it, it can it can reflect um, a bit of the of the macroeconomic um, sort of elements that are included in the fundamental analysis. However, this would be uh, closely uh, closely tied with with sort of um, the, the the movements of, of the market and and, and the, the volatility of the market. Because uh, as we all understand, um, as far as as as, it is, as risk hedging is concerned, 
uh, we could look at the macroeconomic uh, aspects but then there's something very um, sort of unpredictable about the way the markets behave and how sort of day-to-day -day, uh, events can sort of change the way uh, the risk perception of a currency is, is sort of assessed. So that's why the market-based uh, methodology is good to sort of try to weight um, those factors in and just try to predict, have a, a, a bit more of an accurate prediction of, uh, of, of the sort of behavior of the currency. And then the mixed forecast is, um, is sort of a methodology that tries to combine uh, these sort of two fundamental and market-based. And so um, it'll obviously give us a, a, a better uh, or, or a higher flexibility in that uh, we could sort of uh, pick and choose the elements that we sort of want to uh, have a, a, an impact in the in the forecast um, in the forecasting of our, of, our, of our currency. So when when looking at these three methodologies, uh, we think that perhaps the mixed forecast is the best one because uh, as much as as the, the bad is influenced by macroeconomic factors, we still believe that um, sort of the subjectivity of the market and sort of the volatility in the day to day events could actually have a strong impact in, 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 in the perception of risk. So we would actually um, suggest uh, PLC to, to consider a mixed forecast. Um, so we're going to move on and talk about the market-based forecast. Okay, so now we're going to look at the market-based forecasts. Um, this assumes that the um, forward price um, accurately predicts the uh, what's going to happen to the exchange rate of the bot. Um, so basically we calculate the amount that the bot depreciates um, using the forward price and the current spot price and according to the market based forecast the bot will lose 6.67% of its value over the next 90 days so from this we can see that the bot is indeed uh, depreciating. Uh, next we're going to look at um, the technical forecast and the market based forecast. Um, so if the technical forecast is indeed more accurate than the current market based forecast, it indicates that um, the current market doesn't even show weak form efficiency. Um, and weak form efficiency um, would be when current exchange rates already reflect historical information and as such the technical forecasts would not be useful. Um, however, um, the technical forecasts um, are more accurate over the short term and less accurate over the long term, while the technical forecasts tend to make a bunch of assumptions um, and the market forecasts will tend to be more accurate over the long term. Um, so next, we're going to look at the fundamental forecast and expectation given by the fundamental forecasts. So according to the fundamental forecasts, there is a 30% chance that Thai interest rates will de the, the Thai bot will depreciate by 2% over the next 90 days, a 15% chance that the bot will depreciate by 5% over the next uh, 90 days and a 55% chance that the bot will depreciate by 10%. So basically, in order to determine um, the spe expected rate at which the um, bot will depreciate, we've multiplied um, the probability of each scenario by the percentage at which it will decrease. And from this, we can see that the um, expected um, rate at which the bot will depreciate is. 6.85 percent. Um, now we're going to look at each situation of the fundamental forecast a little more closely. Um, so basically um, we've calculated the future um, rate of the bot in each of these scenarios um, for the 30 percent scenario. The though under the expected exchange rate um, there is a 
nine pounds per bot. Um, this would be a little bit higher than the 55% um, scenario, but lower than the 15% scenario. Um, so with 30% certainty, the bot will um, be 0 0.0 there will be 0 0.0147 pounds per bot in 90 days. With 15% certainty, there will be 0 0.01425 pounds per bot. And with 55% certainty, there will be um, 0 0.01350 uh, pounds per bot. Um, and as we can see, um, this is a little bit of a simplification of reality um, because there's only three scenarios and reality tends to have many more scenarios. But this is what the fundamental forecast has produced. Um, next, we are asked um, about the fundamental um, forecast in the forecast day and which scenario turns out to be more accurate. Um, so basically, in hindsight, we're trying to figure out um, which scenario was more accurate. We're calculating the forecast error by taking the absolute value of the forecasted value. Um, subtracted from the realized value and dividing it by the realized value. Um, by doing this, we can see that the 30% scenario was indeed correct, um, whereas the other two were not correct. Um, if the exchange rate turns out to be 0 0.0147 pounds per bot, as this was what was predicted by this, um, the 30% scenario, um, so that this scenario was correct, um, the expected um, the rate at which the bot was depreciates was wrong by about 5%. Um, so we hope that you've learned a bit about um, which forecasting techniques uh, Blades PLC should use between um, technical forecasting, fundamental forecasting, market-based forecasting, and mixed forecasting. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to ask us.